Towards the future you can't bear You've become a cynic Self-defeating and frozen to the core When you wake from this coma I'll be here I just want you back from the dead Life and magic just light the matches and start the fire, start the fire. You feel something again, again. Oh my gosh, I love it when it does this today. How are you? I hope you're having a good evening wherever you are. This is Club Kirby on day two of our evening sessions. And things are just about barely it together. It's, it really has been one of those days today. It's been things have just about been ticking along, but I don't know. I'm kind. Of, I'm just kind of. Uh, I'm a little bit on edge today, if I'm honest with you. I don't know why, but much like yesterday, we're just going to have a very chill session today. We're going to work on this page well in fact we're going to work on that, this page but we're going to work first on just applying the finishing touches to page 17 which precedes it and there's not much left to do here 
all that's left is first of all we've got so many layers now and this late in the day it's uh, difficult to keep track of them all Apologies in advance for any skipped frames if, uh, if the video goes completely during the stream I can see that stream lads are saying skipped frames 99% protected that's exactly that's the kind of day that I'm having today so I hope that the video footage is going to pull through and you're going to be able to see what I'm doing on, on the show today. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of some of these background details that overlap with, with CD here. Actually, I think that's it. Oh, no, there's a little bit here that this bit here is overlapping with Josie's hair. We'll go and we'll get rid of that. Oh! There is something left to do. For consistency's sake, I really should Uh, make the floor black just to just because it was in the first panel. We don't really need to. I'm sure it would work just as well without it, but just so that to help the reader stay grounded. No pun intended. Now, if the floor is black on one panel. Let's always keep that consistent. If only for the course of this particular page of the strip, of the strip, or we can put the uh, panels as well. And I think this is the last bit of divine that we're going to do on this page before we had the lettering and once the lettering is on this one should finally be done this one's dragged on a bit because I ended up taking basically a long weekend off Friday, Saturday, Sunday I wasn't working Kirby at all So that has. I was about to say that's put us further behind, but. Schedule? What schedule? At this point. I'm going to leave a little gap there. Uh, on the edge of the blazer just to indicate where the actual material is versus the shadow inside of it. If that makes sense. I don't just have a black that blends into black. Again, like I talked about in yesterday's stream. You know, black areas that meet up with black other black areas in the enemy, sometimes you need to separate them. So that it's clear which of the different elements are what on the, on the page.
hospital. So we're staying in. The In fact, there's a weird gap there in the line-out, so we'll fill that in as well while we're here. Something on, it was something on the periscope there where the stream was uh, just showing starting soon. Okay, yeah, it is working. I think it was my phone that was acting up. I'll get back to it anyway. This area here. See the hazard coming up. This is what I was just talking about. How are we gonna look around the eyelashes? Because that area is pure black. How are we gonna make that work? Just a black background. The truth is, I'm not sure we can. Uh, to a surrounding area around it, I think that's the best that we can do.
Oh, we have this area here in the background. That's part of the floor too. With that, I think we're done with the illustrative portion of this page. I think the next step is I've got to go back to uh, the script. I actually just uh, copied the whole page into Evernote so that I could easily. So that I could easily drop the dialogue in while Robert on screen here, that's what I was going to say. I need to go back to the last page. cursor off screen there and it undoes the settings and just got rid of the text layer all together. But try it again. I just pasted the video description in there. I didn't copy it. Okay. Try this. That is the description of what's happening in the panel. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's going on today? So you say every key combination that appears in this is doing something else wrong. Drop text on the, the right side here because that's sort of a clean area on the page. And that may help as far as just uh, being able to view the text before I place it in the speech bubbles.
everything about the placement here is going to be that we need to give it some thought in terms of well that's the case with every time you do that and you need to think about the width and the height of uh, each bubble and making sure that it's going to sit in place exactly the way that you want it to storyboard stage. There should be two of them actually, I don't know where the other one's gone. Oh, there it is, okay, yeah. Hidden underneath the uh, black area of the, of the flooring. Oh, there. is I'll just move this over here to start and roughly sort of place it where the mock up bubble is. And we'll do the same for these bubbles as well. I don't know, I kind of feel like Sadie's could almost go up here, but that might be a tight squeeze. And it kind of works better down here. We've got a lot of dead space down here, so. The rounded balloons in Clip Studio Paper, but that's just my sort of personal preference.
I think what I might do is just build them up that hole. See these uh, dialogue there just because she's really gonna let Josie have it. She's uh, she's not gonna hold back. Um. Normally I would merge these two bubbles so that there's no space and no bridge between them. Typically I would only use uh, a bridge or a bar if you will where there's two characters who have dialogue that's going back and forth but sometimes I think aesthetically it works better if you Um, place the two bubbles further apart and then push them. I'll demonstrate by me. You can go there. over and above existing speech bubbles and then we can merge them all together later but so normally if I had a character who had uh, two consecutive speech bubbles I would just merge them together but sometimes you want know, to have one tail into the next one like that just because it works better for your placement on the page and breaking the page up, making the most of the space that you have, but also to suggest, I think, like a, 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 a space in the dialogue, if you see what I mean, a gap between, in this one, like where Josie's saying, see, you wait, and then before she immediately goes into the next thing, it's not breathless, it's like there's a pause there, and then she says the next bit of dialogue, so. Just some things to think about in terms of laying out speech bubbles. Cobbling a bit. Some of these things that might seem really minor. Thinking a lot about the direction of uh, 
rules. I'm making sure that they point towards the magazine's rounds as far as is possible. I try to make sure that uh, a bubble points directly, a, a tail on speech bubble points directly towards the characters. Yeah, sometimes like that it would be very awkward if it pointed up right at that sort of angle. It looks a bit better when we're done, but generally, like this one here, it's pointing right at Josie's mouth at him, you know, at the top of her head or her elbow or something. As a general rule, we're trying to make the tail of the speech bubble point at the mouth. Anyway, um, so now we can hold on real quick to make another little adjustment here, or at least to uh, Ideally, you would always want to have a speech bubble, sort of uh, the text, you know, thin point uh, or smallest point at the, at the top. If you need to have a bit where there's a bit of lar uh, you know, longer dialogue, have it extend it in the middle and then scale it back down again at the bottom. So it's almost like a, a diamond shape, really. Just to make the most logical use of the space that you have within the speech bubble. Because again, if you think about the shape of the speech bubble, even this more circular one, it, you know, yeah, is a bit tighter at the top, a bit tighter at the bottom. It's at its widest point in the middle, and so we're trying to get the text to roughly adhere to that. If you look again at the one at the bottom, it starts off with just one word two in the middle and then one again at the bottom just because we're making the most of the of the real estate that we have and trying to make the text flow in what seems like a natural way in keeping with the rest of the page so so many layers and Manage them all. The panel 2's bubble mockups are kind of weird because the part of one is missing. I was scrambling to make these uh, mock ups so quickly that they got a bit messy. So, what we'll do as well. That, then. that gives us a general idea of what, what the initial idea was about where the bubble, speech bubbles would go. We need to have Sadie's dialogue on top here, because she's speaking first. Well, we don't need to, but we choose to, and then Josie responds. But Josie's here on the left, so... Hold on, I've got to make sure what I'm saying is right. Is that how the dialogue is supposed to go? Yeah, that's correct. So Sadie has the first, uh, the first uh, bubble, and then Josie responds. I think that this panel was originally flipped, so I think that uh, they were originally facing the other way, and I flipped everything around. For the sake of the speech bubbles, but also for visual consistency, because Josie was on the left side on the first panel and Sadie was on the right, so I decided to flip it around just so that the characters aren't jumping back and forward uh, in every panel and uh, we're not throwing the reader off. See, a lot of thought goes into this stuff, it's not just uh, done at random. Um, 
Anyway, so we've got the rough idea of where the bubble text is going to go. And then that is just the mock up of it. And I think I spoke about this in the previous too, but the mock up text is almost just like gobbledygook. If you look very really closely at it and then look at the final text, you'll see that it's kind of gobbledygook that is scrolled out in such a way that it actually is uh, a substitution that should be roughly in line with how the how much text is going to be in the final one. In other words, I'm looking at the actual dialogue and then I'm just sort of scrolling it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back up to the top. is a decent chunk of uh, text. But we actually have a bit more room here to work with um, than it seems. going to work out exactly the way that we planned it to because there's so much of it. This is, this is a wordy panel. Uh, but let's try it. So. Usually, I'll just kind of go down the side, and it's going to be. It need to be a lot more concise than kind of we afford to have. More than two birds on each one.
Okay, let's just do that. I think. I think. Just a bit squeeze that in here. Yeah. If you remember, issue two of Kirby, you'll remember that uh, Max even Ruby and Josie all uh, teamed up to. Give Sadie a good knocking of red in the supply room, which is kind of, uh, and we're still seeing the frolic from that all this time later in, the, in this issue. And uh, now Josie's acting very apologetic. I don't know if you've ever had this experience uh, with someone, you know, uh, uh, in school where someone uh, treats you horribly, and then when they realize there's going to be repercussions, they're like, oh no, no, no. no. Yeah, you and I, we, we've always been cool with each other, right? And that's definitely what we're seeing here. Walking it back. Um, It's going to be a lot spoon, I mean the rounded bowl. I don't know what the uh, heck I'm flying out there. Let's just leave that as it's, 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 again, it's maybe a tight bubble. We only have so much space to work with here, and we don't want to do anything that's going to compromise the art too much. That's okay. Um, I'm 
know, I don't have the luxury of being able to go outside the panels for speech bubbles and things like that, like I used to have working in the, in the old format. So I have to be very conscious about keep everything within the boundaries of the panels now. We've talked about the dialogue for this panel a lot because I did so much work in terms of rendering the details on this panel, knowing that the speech bubbles were going to largely work a lot of it out, so we'll see how this goes. I was going to say I think that that, that, that bubble might be a bit too wordy, but it could be fine as well. And what's the next one? Wordier bubble. It's the same. The school will pay the damages, the craven will pay the damages, and then that way. <laughs> That's going to free up a lot bit of the space.
I feel like I've actually been to the next switch since to say that to suggest that Kraven herself is gonna fit the bill for it. I don't think that she would actually say that, I think she's just like, still people. So. Don't know who you're going with. Right. We'll turn off the... I'm also going to move that a little bit closer to the centre. And then we'll have it, we'll have it be a bit more balanced, I think. Then pulling the out speech for the as well. My favourite uh, bubble, I don't think, in terms of placement or the size of it, but sometimes it's uh, a 
nice to see it have when it's just a bit more awkward like that. I don't know, I don't think I like that third bubble in general, I think it's, it's third panel in general, I think it's sort of the weakest one, that's a, that's a shame to say that because I'm sure I really Okay Now, the art is, is not terrible as, as far as it goes I think that the speech bubble kind of obscures sort of the better part of it, so I think that's part of the, part of the problems I'm going to try and come up with a better solution. So we can at least see some of it. Is a very little change.
That's a good, it's as good as I'm going to get it with that bubble without re rewriting the dialogue because the word yesterday is always going to be longer than the dialogue that precedes it. yesterday kind of uh, messes up the floor of the bubble a bit but Is it won't let me select that text. So I have to go and re I re retype it in bold text. I have no idea what that's about, but anyway. Um, I'm going to merge those two words together. So. You can see how that worked out a lot better than the original plan of just having. What have I done with? Yank me. Yank me. Headphone cord out there. Um, you can see how that worked out a lot better than the original plan there, in terms of having some speech bubble text on the bottom and on the top, and it was going to obscure 
I want the dialogue. And there was also going to be a lot of awkward space around Josie on either side. And I can just enlarge her on the panel and have her take up more of the panel because then that would just cause that would just cause further problems. So it was a case of move uh, her to the side and use that real estate that that space that was on either side. Uh, reallocate that. Put the speech bubble text there. And now that's a much more balanced sort of uh, panel and that works quite well within the floor of the page in terms of having the character, we see her and then we can, you know, we have Sadie's text on the, on the furthest top left part of the, of the panel, then we see Josie's character and then we see her dialogue on the right side and that leads us right into the uh, panel here and I've just noticed as I'm talking to you, this she will the background back here because she was so CD is so small. Not the I think I put the pen. <laughs> I'll the pen down and then I put it where it is. Oh, it's in the box. Ah. I'm moving first today. We're this late in the day, I'm not going to go find the correct way to do this hour on I'm just going to fill it in and see these hour on Discovered. I'll fill it in. There we go. That's fair. Right. So, got one more. A little to uh, later. Again, this is going to be a bit of a mouthful of dialogue, so I'm going to split that into two panels, or two bubbles, as you say. Dramatic emphasis. 
I just to have a score on this uh, last panel of the page with a bang. Help. And get a bit more dramatic and encourage the readers to come back after a long day. Right, um. And again, normally I would just merge the two speech bubbles, but I think I'm going to use a bridge here and just uh, give them a little bit of breathing. Then. as far as this page goes. Okay, that took a long time. <laughs> they always take a long time. What would I do differently on this page then at this point? I think if I was laying it out again, I'm trying to find a way to make sure this line the door or not. Uh, the waste of it is because it always seems to create a tangent, but that might just be because of how it looks when it's zoomed out. It's easier to look back and, and learn lessons after the event, I think, it's, uh, but you have some distance from the piece. So, yeah. I, I mean, I say that it's done, there's always the possibility I'll go in here and make some changes before we actually upload any of these. So. This is going to be page 18 and as you can see this page is uh, a lot of the work on this is uh, the basic components that are laid out already so and you can kind of see on this page uh, the differences in the way that I'll approach certain panels so 
sometimes if it's just a close-up of a single character, if the expression is very important in the storyboard stage, I will go in and do it in a very cartoony sort of style. And other times, I need to figure out how the characters intersect with the environment, like in the second panel. Uh, so that's much more about just laying down a basic model. I need to see how the characters are going to look height-wise compared to each other, uh, and how they, you know, they fit within the environment. So, uh, a very different approach there. And again, all of this is making uh, allowances for the speech bubbles as well. Third panel is much like the first, again it's just a bit a close-up and a very basic sort of uh, idea of what Josie is going to look like in the third. Fourth panel is kind of like a melding of the two styles and the reason for that is again I need to make sure that the characters are scaled correctly I need to make sure I've got the kind of the expressions down as well though. And I need to make sure that they intersect correctly. In the case of a panel like this, you can see I've put a lot of thought in already for the fact that Josie and Sadie are gonna shake hands and by the end of the, these two pages that uh, they have a tentative truce. And so I have I've, I've given a lot of thought about this already. So this fourth panel is Almost like halfway done already, basically, when we, go, when we uh, get started on drawing this panel, we're really just going to have to go over it and sort of draw a more refined version of it, and there isn't going to be a whole lot of uh, extra thought that we need to put into it. But that is all ahead of us anyway. Uh, I think that we should wrap it up there for today. I kind of thought that on, on stream today that we would power through the lettering and then we get on to drawing this part of this page. But instead I think what we'll do is on tomorrow's stream we'll just get started drawing this. I don't think it's gonna fingers crossed, I don't think this page is gonna um take as long as page 17 did. So that's gonna be the plan I think. Uh, yeah, that's what I've said for today. We've done a lot of work today. I kind of ended up being more of just a, a, a pure lettering stream than anything. Um, we'll leave a little bit next time, so I, I'm back up uh, early for this evening. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for today's Club Kirby. Uh, as always, uh, you can support us by donating at uh, ko-fi.com forward slash Kirby or streamlabs.com forward slash Kevin Morgan Kirby. You can follow us on Twitter at Periscope, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, all over the place. And it all helps whether you're donating or if you're just following. Or, or just, uh, you know, even just leaving a comment or whatever. It's all a big help, so. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening and every evening. And every afternoon we'll do the afternoon shows as well. And uh, continuing to watch the shows and being Curve the Weavers. All of your support, all of that, is, is a big motivating factor to me uh, in terms of keeping this going. So, I look forward to seeing you. On tomorrow's show, we'll, we'll get onto this next part page and we'll get started uh, refining this and getting this done. So, I hope to see you. Uh, tomorrow is going to be 8 till 10, I think, or 8 till the repair, so it's anything like tonight. But, uh, yeah, 8 pm UK time tomorrow, and we'll have our next edition of Club Kirby, so thank you for watching and I will see you then.